All right, guys, welcome back. So we are going to move on to Group B. This is the big matchup, my personal favorite rivalry, at least in 2015. It's TSM VP. We expect this to go the distance. Thorne, Katie, and Fifi joining me on the desk. What do you guys think? I mean, like you say, I, I agree. I think it's been the best rivalry of the year. They play four best of threes. Perfectly, it's it stuck two to two. Now, I've actually got someone here who was involved in one of these rivalries who got one of the wins for TSM there at EPL Winter. In terms of this series, just going into the, the overall before we get into the maps, who do you actually think has the edge of, between VP and TSM? Because it is two to two, like we say. I think if they conquered their choke thing, I think TSM has it because it was very close at the Copenhagen Games. And I believe throughout watching those games that TSM should have won both of those best of threes and that they simply just failed miserably when it actually counted to get those last 15th and 16th round. So I think TSM has the edge and I think that other than the ECA victory, which of course was a, a, a great thing for Virtus Pro, I think that that PGL tournament meant so much for the TSM guys that they're like on a pretty good uphill rise right yeah, now. Yeah. No, I mean, well, the interesting thing about the dynamic as an overview between the two teams is that obviously TSM have had these problems closing games out yeah. or choking at the big point in the tournament, whereas the VP guys are kind of legendary for like comebacks and they yeah. always stick around and you can't put them away easily. So that's why I think it's made this perfect matchup before. Exactly. Now, what's interesting is neither team's really ever just blown the other one away. So if TSM's really on this other level, maybe this is the first time they can ever do it. I don't know, but we've got the map veto here. So let's go into the overall here. So... Yeah. VP bans Dust 2. Actually, not, not no. in necessarily even TSM specific here. They don't play it very much. TSM bans Cobble. Now, that's because, well, we, we saw what happened when Virtus Pro played yesterday on Cobble. Yeah. They, they were unreal. And, and TSM doesn't play Cobble, like, at all. They remove it every single time, these uh, veto systems. And actually, th this veto is nearly 100% identical to the one that I had with the, the TSM yeah. guys at, at the ESL Pro League. Like, Virtus Pro removing Dust 2, you all know that they're going to do that. TSM removing Cobble. And at that time, Virtus Pro also picked Mirage, and we picked what did we, we picked Overpass at that time because it was just after the update. We had okay. to try something crazy. Like yeah. actually, that was like totally a crazy pick. Like Kerrigan just went like, we need to try something if we want to win this best yeah. of three. So we just said, let's gamble, and and basically that gamble paid off. Th actually, the second map was Cash. I'm sorry. Yeah, and cash, then yeah. yeah, and we lost that one after throwing. I think leading 14 to 10. And then the choke just started to hit okay, us. So, that, uh, so map one VP picks yeah. Mirage. Now we've seen TSM doesn't mind playing Mirage. It's, it's the famous home map for yeah. VP. So understandable one there. Now TSM picks Inferno. Again, mm -hmm. listen, both teams love this map. You always see it in this series between the two. But here's where it's interesting to me because, okay, VP bans Nuke. That's fairly obvious. Mm -hmm. They know TSM is one of the best and it's going out anyway. So no team that doesn't play Nuke that much is going to really put much emphasis on yeah. it. But here's the interesting one to me. TSM actually bans Cash. They decide to go with Overpass. Now, you're referencing here. Mm -hmm. they, they brought Overpass in as kind of like a wild card last time they played, well, at the, at the EPL Winter one. Yeah. Whereas in the past, these two teams always played Cash, actually. That mm -hmm. was like a, a really close match, actually, between them as well. Why, why do you think picking Ka Overpass now? Because of that series of EPL, do you think? Yeah, I think it's like, I think against uh, Virtus Pro, like in terms of what maps Virtus Pro is good at, I think they have the edge on Overpass because interestingly, they actually lost against Navi on Overpass yesterday. And I was sitting there observing like yeah. five meters away and I could hear the discussion going on because they were really mad about losing that one because all of a sudden in that game, they changed up their play style from having the AWP on the A side with device to th playing it on B side with Kerrigan. And that means that they lose so much map control on that map and they discussed that quite heavily. And I can tell you that was big tensions, but obviously they solved it. I know they're gonna change that for today. And actually the thing about Mirage is TSM feels like they don't get the hype uh, about their own Mirage because actually they've been, I think, winning six uh, Mirage in a row against Fnatic, NIP, Virtus Pro, and, and so on. So they're like on an uphill battle. Yeah, and keep in mind, it was 12-3 on their T side yesterday against Navi on Mirage, who were yeah. quite good on it. The other thing with Overpass, which you guys haven't really alluded to, is that was also played at Star Series. TSM had a massive lead on it, so if they get over their choking problems, that was when VP had that comeback, and in the last round, Taz had the VAC authentication error, it ended up going to overtime. Yeah. If they had to get over their, their issues then, then we might have had a, an easy one-sided scoreline that time too. So I, Overpass does actually kind of fa favor TSM mm -hmm. in yeah. these two. Yeah, well, for sure. And wh what people talk about in the, in the specific matches, like when I talk with Dupree about what the change with the Fetish and Kerrigan has like meant for their team, yeah. it is, he said that they have a, a better matchup now or like a better mix of set strats, defaults, and like small anti-strats. Like Kerrigan is really good with anti-strats. And actually I know for a fact that they would rather face Fnatic than they would face NIP because they like that specific matchup more. And uh, I mean, obviously not gonna mean that they're gonna go and lose this game, but okay. I'm just saying that they prefer to play Fnatic. So you're say listen, you're saying TSM's got a really good Mirage, it's underrated, that 
you're liking the overpass for them. Infernos, obviously a TSM yeah. You must be saying TSM 2-0 then, right? <laughs> you must be bold if you really think all those maps are going to TSM. I mean, I, I am biased to a certain extent. I mean, playing with them and knowing them this well, I mean, obviously I want them to win. Okay. And I, th I think this match pool and the matchup between TSM favors, favors them against Virtus Pro. I think it's going to be... Actually, I think it's going to be 2 0. I'm, I'm going to throw it out two there. 2 0 TSM? Yeah. Okay, I'm actually going to take TSM as well, but I'm going to go 2 to 1 because mm -hmm. I think, listen, actually, I agree TSM's uh, it, Mirage is very good. But on the other hand, because of the Fnatic and Envious era, I feel like actually Inferno's and sometimes underrated for VP, they can be monsters on that map. And VP's too hard to put away. I think I don't yeah. think you can put away VP in 2 0 no, unless no, no. you're in amazing form. So I'll take TSM 2 to 0. Does it, uh, 2 to 1. Does anyone on the panel have another? I think if VP wants place? to win it, they've got to win it in two. The first two maps are dead split, I think, yeah. between these two teams. The, the games that TSM tend to win on Inferno, they get good starts, so we'll have to watch for that. Um, but if it goes to overpass, I think TSM has it. So I'll, I think TSM 2-1, just based on how close the other two maps are. But again, if VP win it, it's got to be in two. Mm -hmm. Florin? Yeah, actually, we just want to throw out there because... You've been so harsh the entire time to all kind of different people. I know that Fiflaren has very bad memories with Mirage and Virtus Pro. Do I? When that time Snacks got behind you? No. Behind me? Oh, yeah, that one, but like the final Dude, right? that was so Okay, so apparently uh, the producer is telling us that we actually oh, can't go okay, this. Yeah, we yeah, have yeah, to go yeah, live yeah, right yeah. now. <laughs> And that's okay. that's what, what the producer said. Confirm Nip fan. That's just stuff there. Okay. Same All right. Well, <laughs> no, but okay. Yes. Just fast. Yes. VPS are very great, uh, good, good barrage team as well. So, uh, but I do believe TSM will take this two one. Okay. Okay. Well, we're about to find out. So first map is underway, and this is the pistol round. This is not the knife. We are already live, and it looks like TSM are starting out on the T side and heading toward B with uh, a little bit of aggression. They do slow it down just a little bit. I love this. Look at look at VPS actually around here. Decided to just take over, just leave A and just play uh, retake on the bomb site. Sure, now they didn't go there, actually opting to go towards B for TSM, but the flank here from, I'm not actually quite sure which, who, who that is, so it's Taz, okay. He actually pushed up middle. Yeah. But the thing is, this is also good. By the time he actually comes over here, chances are that most of the other v VP members will just rotate over to B. Well, that's the big thing. He hasn't spotted anyone. But he may think they're an A as a result of this, because they no, were because they, they've been peeking, like Bialy and Neo have been peeking the uh, bomb site. Okay, so that changes it up a bit. Dupree still sits back, and they're going to hold station still on TSM's side. So even though they fell off originally, they won't go all the way back. And you're right, Neo is still watching in that underpass area. Yeah, Taz has gone all the way to A. Yeah, now that, he, now that he's gotten all the way to A and hasn't spotted anyone, now the gig's up. And there they go, right past Snacks already. He shows off how sneaky he can be in that position. KGMB does go back into him, but it favors Virtus Pro, and KGMB gets the double. He's going to continue on Tech 9 all the way inside. The site needs to get this shot on Neo, does so successfully. And Device has found Neo you know, as well. So now it's just Taz, who is the Lurk player, who went all the way over toward the A site that's left. He's found the first, and it's only 5 HP for Device. So bringing this back to a one on one late, he's got full control and armor to work with, as does Device, but. That's all he's really got. Extremely low on time here. Look where he's the bomb actually, is yeah, as well. Yeah, he's not gonna have time to plant. Yeah, bomb's already down. He's gotta go for the kill, so he has to take the fight. And there it is. Taz just holds station, holds steady, and time was in his advantage. Yeah, uh, I think that would have turned out... Yeah, sure, it was a 1-1 one -one at the end. I think that would have been probably uh, more of a TSM round if they had uh, pushed a little bit earlier. Sure, now they didn't know that VP actually pushed up mid and they cleared everything. But since the time, it, since it took so, lo so, so long time, um, you know, VP had four there. He was just waiting for him. So we will see Dupree go straight onto a Galil. And this is the five, M, uh, five uh, excuse me, SMGs. Yeah, and TSM is... Oh, I take that back. There's a FAMAS on Pasha. And TSM, th this is actually very similar to what VP does as well. Just smoke off the A-bomb side just to try and go for the, the bomb plant and just play uh, after plant. The VP does exactly the same on the... Normally on the Ricos. So is it next looking to bounce the smoke out? Cover off the drop in toward the site. That covers off the backside from jungle. Kerrigan's going to work up from the underpass. But there is a player close up in shadow right now. I believe that's Snacks that's in position. It's not. I take it back. It's actually Bialy. He's already found one. Make it two. He gets device as well. And Tasha's going to contribute with one before that. Make it a hat trick. Good play from Bialy. And that's $1,800 to his name based on the MP7. Yeah, uh, good hold. Uh, TSM with that round it tends to be very strong and actually do manage to get the bomb most of the time. But VP had a had a good answer to it, so um, they hold it, they held it off. 
They won't Without losing upgrade. a single man as well, which is even better. Yeah, and, it, and they get another rifle out, even though they don't upgrade, because Bialy picks up that lone Galil that Dupree had. Yep. Down middle they go. Good nade out from Neo. That collects the remaining health on Zipnix. Neo's already going to contribute with another now on to Kerrigan. Good response, though, from TSM, even though this is an eco. They do take down two members, but that's all they'll get. They won't get anywhere near a bomb site to hope for the extra money. And look at the money right now, as we see on Neo. $8,600. Yeah, he got, he got the four kill there and just... He got some money to spend. And they'll go for the M4s this time because the AKs are coming out. In fact, op up for Neo. He's going to be the one to wield it as well. So fast spawn for him. This puts him into connector quite quickly. For that mid pick. Oh, misses the jump. Hits his head on the roof. No one peeking just yet. Kerrigan, as we can see, is lurking. Throws out that smoke. That'll hit toward the window. Just not able to connect the shot from Neo. And now he has to fall. He knows there's one up close. And oh my goodness. Zipnik so lucky, or pardon me, Dupree so lucky he didn't get taken down by that shot. Crosses over. Taz has to come out and take down the player at Catwalk, but he hasn't got confidence in the angle. He's waiting for Cajun B to get closer. Meanwhile, Dupree just holds tight. Sit station, wants a pick from his teammate. Neo's going to find it in the other way. It's Virtus Pro who now have the three man advantage. Zipnik lurks in toward A slowly. Does hit the first shot, but Bialy responds. Finally, Pasha drops, and something goes the way of TSM on the first gun. Dupree makes it a double. Neo almost takes him down right after. And he does, make no mistake on the second effort. Yeah, uh, Neo missing the shot, the first one there in connect. I actually thought it was going to be quite scary there, actually mi missing that shot. Because uh, TSM since took over middle as well, they could easily just rush him up and just manage to kill off Neo that was holding the connector area. That actually did not happen. And then obviously, I don't know if you if people saw it there, Sipnix with uh, the monster spray on the A-bomb side did not manage to... I should get the kill. And Viali, who didn't even see him coming in yet. Yeah. Because he had full line of sight on the shoulder. So we do have a pause. That was called by Virtus Pro. They've already unpaused it. So whatever yeah. it is, is already resolved. Get back into it. But look at the pistols. They do actually pull out a Tech 9 already on Cajun B. But so far, TSM not finding around the way of their terrorist side. And again, a lot of their victories as of late, they've become more of a T sided team. Oh yeah, they've been really them, well. Yeah, we used to call them the opposite under Fetish's leadership. Yeah, yeah, that that, that was the thing. That was their main concern. Though. Whenever, whenever we used to play them, and whenever you watch them play, it's like, yeah, you know they're going to be super good on the CT side, but you also know that their T side is not um, that strong. So they really worked on it, and they they kept their strong CT side as well. So they overall, I I feel like they're they're a better team now. Well played by Dupree to get above that smoke, just spotting up his enemy over above it. But look at this push on to B. It's all Neo who's in the backside still with the USP. Manages to get one and somehow Bialy and Pasho manage to contribute from the backside. Although they are down to a two on two. And look at Bialy, only two HP. Bomb goes down, but Pasho won't let this secure positioning. Oh, oh so careful. Device has to hit this shot with the op. And if he whiffs, this does give the M4 a lot of chance. Okay, good. He got the call from a teammate. He was low and swaps to the P250. And now we've got one working for TSM. Yeah, that was an eco as well, so that was a great job from them. Um, VP getting a little bit caught off guard there, it feels like. They, they lost the two entries right off the bat. Uh, Biala was kind of lucky, actually, to get that one kill on the uh, B bomb side before... Um, was it Zipnix? Maybe it was Zipnix been. on the way through, but Neo, yeah. either way, was the one that was completely caught off guard and overwhelmed because the second player on Catwalk was so far away from the site on the entry. Yeah. So Kerrigan will slowly lurk down mid. No one from window to get the shot on him. They do have that smoke out, as well as the second one on Taz. He could see above that, but he has to stay in the angle that covers off the underpass. Because if he gives that up, and they're already that close on mid, they'll just march in on his position. Kerrigan wants to do it anyway. Flash goes out. Kerrigan can't hit the shot, and somehow Taz gets away with it. The FAMAS wins the exchange, and now it's up to Bialy and Shadow. Dupree checks it immediately. That'll pull it back, but look at Pasha. He's already turned around and put his attentions directly back into A, and as a result, Zipnix goes down. And he'll fall inside connector, dodges the flash, wants to get through that smoke. Dupree's still stuck inside sandwich. They haven't crossed over. And Pasha's got himself in good position, but he gets caught with a nade out. Pasha, one HP, manages wow. to pull. Oh my, and make it a third. One HP for Pasha. <laughs> How easily he could have dropped if the nade wasn't out for Dupree. Uh, that's so funny with Pasha. I, I, don't, I don't think that people realize this, but Pasha has like probably one of the worst movements in game. It's just that his aim is so freaking good that he managed to get away with it like every single time you saw there like one hp you know he's, he's a bit clumsy walking around you know getting all these headshots just killing everyone it's like it's so typical pasha and highlighted this time by james that the office is going to be out on device despite that there's only pistols to complement it 
tags up Pasha. The question is, can the pistols get in and get the shot? Because he hides himself in the corner. As Taz has already found Dupree, Cajun B does eventually get Taz, but look at the rest of Virtus Pro. They all pop out. It's a very aggressive mid from all angles. And Kerrigan and Device are all that's left. Device is really stuck right now as well. He's on such low HP. He has to get one kill to get himself out. They've got full angles on him. Even if he throws the op, there's the first. That's Neo. Now all three are here, so if he actually managed to get them in a one-on-one, -on -one, that might have had a chance, but it was a slim chance. So Virtus Pro get back in very low as well, so... Um. Yeah, I'm not sure what I actually feel about that buy. Yeah, sure, VP is very low on money. Uh, buying the op just to get a kill or two uh, just keeps their economy at a minimum, but now he's stuck with the Tech 9. Yeah, sure, he has to smoke in two flashes, but when, the, when you, your, the rest of your teammates doesn't buy as well, even though it's just a pistol and armor and whatnot, then it's not really worth it most of the times. Especially on a map like execution. But Bialy's already forward of this. So despite that they'll cover off the site and most of the angles, they've got players aggressively in position. Taz is one of them. He's already found his way up. He just ran right past Sandwich and got firmly on the other side of the smokes. And look at the effect it has. Complete cleanup. Yeah. That was a good hold. They worked uh, very well together as well. You saw Taz getting the two kills. Bialy then jumping up because they, they were looking down. Uh, down by Shadow, to try and kill Taz, obviously, when he was reloading. Taz managed just to save him, and then uh, Bialy managed to save him, and then Taz came in for the, for the last, so... TSM already six rounds down. It's not been a common sight for them. Although against Fnatic, they did, in the final of CCS, manage to pull back one game that was quite out of reach, and it was, in fact, on I Mirage. I think this is the same score. I was yep. seven to one, but they, I think they started to see the side then. Well, Neo's already found Kerrigan, but the pistols are doing reasonable damage, make it more. Neo's down to 4 HP. If they can secure this kill, this will split up the two remaining defenders and give them a chance to get into a bomb site. They do. Cajun B finds him. Cajun B finds Snacks as well. It's all left to Bialy, and for the second time, an eco might pick up a round right now. Yeah, VP playing so overly aggressive, especially knowing that they're on a save. There's there's no real reasoning to just play that, that aggressive. You just hold the sights and... Just make sure you get your teammate to help out instead of just taking the battle mid, where okay. you don't really have to. I mean, again, they have to actually hit a site. And it's the right call to go to B because they know Bialy is an A player. Snacks is already down. So Zipnix will put this in place. They've only managed to pick up one M4. Dupree's the one that has it. And he's fallen back inside apartment, so he just has to wait out the angle. And here comes Bialy. Good molly on Zipnix. That'll force him out into the peak. Oh. But he gets it on the way by. <laughs> Drive by shooting from Zipnix. Again, good eco by TSM. I mean, they're taking advantage over the fact that VP is playing way too aggressive on their, on their eco or on their anti-ecos. Um, and it hurt them. I mean, that's the second round they got out of, out of both rounds that they actually won, which, you know, they were on a save. So, uh, I mean, if they keep on doing it like this, like, it's the small rounds. They're, they're very good on the seat side as well. So, even though they had some issues in the beginning of the match versus Fnatic, I mean, VP should still be careful here. We can just pop firing toward connector, so Taz will fall off of it again. He watches for the lower side. Nate goes in as well, but that will do no damage. And Neo, look how aggressive he is this time. So they've swapped this. Neo's the one inside the apartments. It's Snacks that's up on catwalk. And Biala was actually all pushed all the way down in Palace. Well, he makes it work. So he gets the kill. He falls back. So one down plus information gained back into position. And TSM's job gets a little bit harder as a result of that. And again, another aggressive play from the A hold. It's Taz that's in shadow this time. Dupree still lurking over at B. Knows that Snacks in particular, although it's not him this time, does like to push up those apartments late in rounds. And we are at the 40-second mark. That's usually when he starts to do it. But where they've already got a read on A, and like we say, it's a switch in position. Neo's the one there. That's not going to happen. Device! No. Oh my goodness! Cajun B! That is a huge misplay. He had the shot lined up, and Cajun B walked directly in front of his sights. That's frustration. That has to be frustration for TSM. And again, gun rounds not going their way. It's all device that's left. Let's see if he can make up for it. One on three gets... No, doesn't get the first. I thought for sure he had the flick, and Bialy puts him down. So, so far, it's only Ecos that have gone their way. Yeah, and especially, like you're saying, must be frustrated. Because he, since he spotted him as well, like, he knew that, okay, once he peeks there, I'm going to get him. And then the TK just, just happened. Man, oh man, it was just painful. It was yeah. like <laughs> slow motion watching the body come out. You yeah. knew he was already lining up the shot. So mistimed play from Cajun B. I mean, it's hard to fault anyone there, but 
Cajun could have sat back a little more, so now we've got double ops back out. It's Pasha Neo to hold them, and they're just going to rush it on to B. This time, the difference is the nades and Molotovs are already in place. Neo's going to collect two, so all the damage dealt. Now Snacks just jumps up. M4 closes out the round. This is looking very good for Virtus Pro right now. Oh, yeah. For sure. I mean, considering when they, uh, last time uh, TSM played, Mirage was actually versus Fnatic, and they were down, they were they sort of seat to side, was down like 7-1, to one, managed to get get it back to 8-7, to seven, and then they just stomped Fnatic on their T side. I'm going to be curious to talk to VP after this match as well, because actually, they were the only ones in the lobby when I went down to get breakfast this morning, and they said, what map should we play? And I said, why are you asking me? They said, because we know, we just want to see if you're right. <laughs> so I want to see what they actually hope to pick against them. So, wh so what did you say then? I thought Nuke might come out against oh, really? these okay. two teams. Yeah, I thought, I mean, Virtus Pro is fairly good on it, TSM mm. is fairly good on it. I thought Nuke might have shown up in this pool. It hasn't traditionally against these two teams, but I thought maybe today might be a little different. So that was... Uh, I'm already wrong. Yeah. Yeah? I would have probably... I mean, VP can play Nuke as well, even though TSM, they're good on it. This push, Virtus Pro, and they make it count. They actually lined up, but one meat shield, two for the kill. Again, early man advantage, but look at the damage dealt. Passion, or pardon me, Viali down to 48. Pasha 16, Neo 20, so there's still a chance if they can find the right picks on the way into three. So close, does actually find Viali. Oh, I think he spotted the second player. That pop flash does go out. That'll be easy to dodge. Lots of time to sight that one up, and Cajun B's got to be so careful coming around as Neo manages to take down Dupree. Pardon me, that was Taz. Kerrigan manages to get, okay, through Vent. There was a chance right there on... KGB was coming around from middle. He could have dropped in and actually found Taz, but it fell apart as Snacks popped out behind him, and Kerrigan's in a really hard spot right here. Yeah, but there are only, actually only one player on the A-bomb side, which is Pasha, and he's extremely low, so... Oh, look at the second, yeah, though. Taz, Taz, he's already aimed from connector, and there is one right below. Oh, nice shot, though, but he thinks this is it. And Pasha's just going to walk out, or does he? What is he doing? What? what? I'm not even sure what that was. Did he go for a knife just yeah. to get Kerrigan right there? Because he had the off out and he came around with the knife. So this goes down to a one on two, but Kerrigan's got company to his left. He needs to be completely aware of it. That nade's going to keep him distracted, and Neo just walks around free shot. That shouldn't have gone that far. <laughs> I don't know if Pasha actually misheard him, like where he was planning, that he might have been closer. Um, and then the time was running out, so if he had maybe started to plant two seconds after, then having Kerrigan actually kill off Pasha, he wouldn't, just ha he wouldn't have time to plant, so it was a bit of a misplay. Yeah, that's sure. insane. And it drops one of the ops, they do recover it, but uh, even still, that's an investment. So 10-2, they still have a very hefty lead. We do see two AKs, two Galils come out. Only a Tech-9 for Kerrigan. And TSM, this is not the way they've been playing Mirage lately. Like we said yesterday against Na'Vi, they had 12 rounds on their T side. Yeah. And if they keep up at this rate, they're about to give up 12 rounds on their T side. As Snacks will fall back, play the off angle. Neo's already gone down. The alley did get one just before that, and look at this! Zipnix goes down, but look who was right behind him. They were already setting up for a knife there as well as Bialy snuck out from ladder room. Pasha's going to slow down the push. Bomb does go down three on three. See if TSM can hold these positions. Pasha's already on the back side of the smoke. He's spotted. Device gets him. And Zipnix before that found Taz, so Bialy walks in. Already covered off. Well played, Device. Yeah, and I'm going to have to say, knowing that VP is also very good on the T side, that TSM, they need the last two. It's going to be... Extremely difficult otherwise. You can clearly tell though that VP has a pretty good idea on what TSM likes to do on this map. They need to get in it, into it quickly. Get the mines rolling. Shots on. Neo. Checking the angle. The fire just down below. There's actually two there because Taz is inside with him. So that weakens A just a little bit, but Bialy is pushed up close. They just want to hold mid early on in case there's a push, then they'll fall back to the defaults. And look at Kerrigan, he's going to go for it. We saw him actually go against Taz before, it looked like he was going to win the battle, couldn't control the spray recoil, and this time it's the same thing. Taz, although Kerrigan got the first shot, manages to get the kill, and now it's a man down again for TSM. Damage was dealt though on Neo, look at him, 11 HP. Asha meanwhile with the M4 wreaks havoc into device, he's down to 16, narrowly escaping. And an aggressive peek from Neo still manages to get one. And Snacks is boosted. This is a good spot. Bombs down. TSM have to do it the hard way. It's all device. He's just going to hold on to the op. If he can. 45 seconds left. Yeah, it's a long time. Yep. 
So into the palace, but they're going to be on the chase. They're doing a slow chase. They just want to make sure enough time is gone in the round. Not to give too much up. As we do see as, as well, I mean, Virtus Pro's economy is quite weak, so they can't afford to just throw guns the way of TSM. Yeah, I mean, if they want to play it on the safe side, short eight, uh, since this is the um, second to last round. Uh, but even if they die, because you look at if you look at VP's uh, nades, they don't have too many. So sure, they can still get it get it dropped and stuff, but it will probably not get. Let's say they want Molotovs, right? They probably can't get that if they actually manage to die a few more. But it's actually a lot better to get device killed here. Oh, they're still pushing, oh. and he misses that first shot, so they'll get it. And that was after the round. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, so 650 for Dupree. And Device just has nothing, no answer, just speechless. And again, Dust2 is not in this pool, which has been sort of their, like, their rock. Fnatic beat them on it in the final, sure, last weekend, but every other match on it, they were so so comfortable, and they didn't, yep. even in situations when it was like they were playing from behind, it was, you know, whatever, it's Dust, we're good yep. on this. They don't have that to go to today. And with Mirage, this one-sided so far, and Inferno being dead even between these two teams, it becomes a bit of a mental game for TSM. How quick can they get back into this whole series? Taz flashed out aggressively, but flash in response also means Cage and B can't march in. The Tech-9 does the work, though, picks up the M4, but watch out, got a smoke to cover Pasha, and he just walks out. They don't even counter him off. Bialy also finds Dupree before that. Meanwhile, though, they have gone in on B. This did force a rotation, but Bomb's not down just yet. Kerrigan does take down Neo. He'll push forward for the gun, but he does have a lot of HP to work with, and Snacks is already inside Kitchen. Fire to hold off the door. Pasha smokes out his right, so he'll be able to peek left when he comes through. Kerrigan needs to get the shot immediately. It doesn't matter. Zipnix is going to do it, and they've got the fourth round. But man, only four on their yep. T side. In fact, that's another eco that went their way. So three ecos go their way, and that's, I mean, plus one. That's that's pretty ridiculous. It is. Actually, it kind of reminds me of um, Envious. Yeah. When Tech9 was, was even better than what it is right now, they would tend to just win those rounds and then not win the, uh, as many weapon rounds and just keep in, like, keeping them in the game because of the, the, the one eco rounds. So we'll get things rolling. We'll see if TSM can make anything happen on their CT side. Now, traditionally, we do have talked up TSM's T side more and more. But between these two teams, even the Star Ladder series, it was all CT halves yeah. that really made the difference. So this isn't done by any means between these two teams. It just means TSM have to pretty much win this pistol, and they're going to rush in. Dupree already finding one, answered immediately by Taz, and now Device falling off, has to find the shot. He's domed up. The aim punch forces him back into hiding, and Kerrigan's down to six. Does still manage to pick up the alley, though. But the bomb is going down, or is it? Don't fix it off, because he has no cover, but he does have the shot. It's Cajun B to drop, and they know Device is low, jumping Neo. Up and above. And with Pasha on the backside, it's extra money for Neo after the round is ended, but it's 12 for Virtus Pro and money. Yeah, smart play by Neo, actually, just faking the bomb plant, getting that TSM guy just to uh, to try and see and try and kill off the uh, Neo when, while he was planning. Neo managed to get a really sweet headshot on him, and then managed to get, uh, kill off Kerrigan as well, that was hiding with very low HP in CT spawn. TSM just don't look on their game at all. Obviously, we were, I was very casting. Off, right? Yeah, I was casting the last match, so I never got to see in the warm-up room if they were taking advantage. A lot of teams actually don't often do that. They just warm up right before the match because they don't want to set up, tear yeah. down, set up again. So, I don't yeah, know, maybe that makes a difference. That. So, double scout, Kerrigan, device. Need goes in, device will stare that one down so it doesn't do max damage. 66 left for him. Kerrigan's up on ticket booth, but look at Snacks, already makes his way inside connector, has this SMG to work with. The 1AK on Pasha. And he's down, make it up actually, the ladder. I was about to say down catwalk, but he climbs back around and they're going to swarm onto this ASB alley. Now, now finds two, and they'll check off everywhere in jungle. That's open, that's completely exposed, and even though they're trying to run away and hide on the... TSM side, they're not going to do so easily. Look at this chase. And Zipnix, not able to hit the first shot, will immediately get peaked by Pasha. Yeah. KJV here. I mean, just save 5 7 armor. Can at least use, use it for, for the next round here when TSM are forced to fully save. Or just plow right now by every stretch of the word. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're playing good. Yeah, they roll they seem in. to have like a very good idea on what TSM likes to do, especially on the T side, and then moving on to the C side. They're pretty, like I mean, since they watched the game yesterday that TSM played versus uh, Navi, uh, they pretty much had a probably went over and had a really good idea on what's what to expect and what to, how to counter it. 
I feel like a lot of people are going to focus on TSM where they won the last weekend's tournament. Yeah, all in good company. Them, yeah. Right, but at the same time, Navi won EPL. They did it actually against TSM, although they didn't face each other in the bracket. VP won ESCA. TSM wasn't there. TSM won CCS. VP wasn't there. They're split 2 2. I mean, this yeah. is still a heads up game, but I mean, this whole group, we haven't seen a lot of them play each other over the last two weeks, three weeks. So TSM, although they look asleep, VP just look absolutely on point. Aggressive setup from TSM, too, with these pistols at A. Take the fight to Virtus Pro. Bialy is still lurking inside Palace. Dupree, though, is just going to hold this angle. And Bialy, although he does the rapid fire, doesn't expect Dupree to be there. Neo, though, will check this corner. He's just going to wait for the smoke. Does he see him, though? That's the question. He actually walks by, but Zipnix can't collect it. He can't get the frag. He does mass damage. But with Passion on the backside, he has to fall away from the bomb site. So no kill ensues. And they'll get this bomb plant down. Four on four. Only one SMG picked up. And does TSM go all in and try to make this work? Not with Snacks firing away, that's for sure. Dupree's down and out already. Cajun B makes it back to three on three. SMG has been re-grabbed, but look at the double kill coming out from Virtus Pro. Passion, Snack, pick up one apiece. And Cajun B, all that remains with a 5-7, can't do anything. 14 to four, I mean, now, this kind of, it kind of feels a little bit like NIP Fanatic here. VP just feels on point, on fire. They're just running everywhere, killing off. Uh, all of the TSM players. TSM feels very cold right now. Oh, this is this is a far cry from what they were a week ago. And it's not like anything's changed, you're right. It just seems like they are coming out flat. Yeah. So Cajun B gets inside the window. It's him with the op. He had the front spawn. Dupree just, just inside that smoke. Does have a look toward a ramp. But no one inside connector. So again, despite they smoke it, it's actually a smoke T-smoke that came out. This gives them more map presence for Virtus Pro, and Agent B's weakened. Dupree's already down. They've got control of this round again as well. And they just have to wait and bide their time. Zipmix on the back side of the vents. Can't even crawl through. Taz is already up and top of the ladder, so they'll pinch on him from either side once they come through connector. Device has snuck up. Oh, he's fired. They knew exactly where he was, and he has to go back. No angle. To hold, Bialy does drop to Cajun B. Bombs being planted. This gives them a bit of a chance to sneak up and get a little bit closer on the CT side. That flash will delay it a little bit longer. And Kerrigan, slow but steady, coming all the way around from B. Might be able to pick up one, but there it is. Taz down from ladder. Zipnix can't even get through there to get back in close to the site. Cajun B does catch Neo. That's on the backside. And they're close enough to suffice. Hold this. They do actually get Kerrigan to hold off Taz. If he can hold out the other player from jungle, there's a chance here for them to hold this defuse. Kerrigan gets in the way. Is he on it? No, he's not still on it, but they will get the kill. No kit. Still lots of time, and they'll bring this back. We won't go to match point just yet. That was a good retake from TSM. What? what? You gotta be kidding me. I thought he had so <laughs> much time. Well, I, I knew it was going to be close, but not that close. I actually thought... I'm not sure if he if it just failed when he started moving and he dropped the... the um, the diffuse. Man, you got to see that again. I'm actually 90% sure that's what happened. That looked like he had it to me. Yeah. Because you saw it like a, the general one when when the bomb turns white, you you have like a... Zero yeah, there's a split second. Like, yeah. yeah, you still yeah. have and that. He, it looked like he had it. But that's rough. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go back and watch the VOD. I was sure he had that. If he didn't, that's the closest I've ever seen it. So we do have match point. I call yeah. it a little bit too soon. Yeah. We do get there. <laughs> We do get 15 now for Virtus Pro. As Taz will climb inside the window yet again. Cajun B. Can't do much about it on Catwalk. And Snacks already finds Dupree. Device wants to get above the smoke. He's cancelled as well. Virtus Pro are looking immaculate. Everything going their way. TSM completely clueless. Not even anything. Now, this becomes extremely mental at this point because there's not even anything going their way. Like, there's, there's nothing positive they can really take from this game, to be honest. As yeah, I mean, he's the just last one to... left. Yeah, it's still doable. He has a kid. There it is. 16 that to 4. That was extremely... That was brilliant from Virtus Pro. I mean, looking at first the, the um, TSM's T side, VP just ran him over. It just felt like they, they couldn't match up in terms of skill, right? And then moving over to TSM's CT side, even though they, couldn't, they didn't play that many rounds, VP just... I don't think TSM actually had a, had an answer to VP's uh, st just standard or default round just on their T side. That's, I mean, that's 
I think it was a combination of VP looking extremely good and at the same time yeah. TSM looking extremely, extremely cold. bad. Yeah, yeah, cold. I think that's uh, the better word. But then we have, I, again, I, yeah, you see Kerrigan actually bringing up the laptop now. <laughs> yeah, strap book. People tend to have like a notepad. He, he has the laptop. He's, Kerrigan's going to on a yeah, stream right now. Well. Yeah, next level. Well, before we come to the analyst desk, we are going to take a short break and we'll be back in about three to four minutes' time. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you then.